Happy Saturday. Today is Saturday, December 5th, week 49 of 2020. We've had a great week. I hope you have too. Today I decided to go out on a hike around Fellows Lake. Well, I didn't really decide right away exactly. I, I kind of left the house, wasn't sure what I was gonna do. Came out to one of my favorite places and most of the entrances for the lake here at Fellows Lake were blocked off. Maybe for the season, I don't know. One of them was open. I was able to walk down on the fishing dock and look around at the lake and just see how beautiful it was this morning. Then I noticed next to the fishing dock area something I had not seen before, which is this walking trail. I think I might be a little bit out of shape. I need to go hiking like this more often. Whew. I wouldn't be so out of breath. I think that should be a 2021 goal. I'm a few pounds overweight or kilos, depending on what part of the world you're in. And uh, ooh, look at that, it's going downhill here. Yeah, maybe I can find a nice place to sit just talk I think oh look at this up here falling down tree over there let's go over there it was a little chilly when I started but it's gotten warmer I had to take my jacket off because I you know started to almost work up a sweat of course part of that's because I'm out of shape like I said I need to do something about that want to be around healthy able to enjoy life to its fullest for as long as I get to be here it's a beautiful beautiful morning there's a little stream going through over here and you can hear the water trickling it's just so calm Week started out on Sunday the 29th. We went to church that morning and then went to a friend's birthday party. On Monday, that was the last day of my staycation. I enjoyed a nice 10 days off. In the past, I used to not let myself take vacations very long. I guess I was, I don't know, I think I, I think I lived out of fear a lot of the times in my work that I had to be constantly there, constantly available, that if I didn't, I might end up unemployed. And I don't know, I've learned since then that that what I provide for my company is valuable. If something were to happen where they didn't see that value, someplace else would, because what I do is helpful, whatever organization I work for. Along those same lines of thinking about my work, I was talking with Zachary. He's about to start school um, in about a month or so. He's looking for a job that'll work well with school and hoping to find something soon. And we were just talking about attitude and how attitude is every bit as important if my well actually it's more important than your skills in my very first job that i ever had in in computers i was shocked to find out that dealing with people learning how to manage the diplomacy of working with people that was more important than my knowledge of what i needed to do with tech support i mean granted i still had to, to step up and learn things but it was more important that i had the right attitude that i had the right determination that I was going to help them whether they were in a good mood about it or not and quite frequently in tech support the people you talk to are not in a good mood at all and that's the nature of it nobody calls tech support to say hey everything's going great I love it that just doesn't happen on Monday I also had a great conversation with a friend online about just stories of our lives. I realized as we shared stories of how we met our wives and, and things like that, I realized that there's a lot of stories there that I want to make sure and put inside of this vlog here. I want to 
take the time to tell the story of how Jill and I met. Jill and I met in college. I was 18 years old, she was 19. We both tried out for a play called You Can't Take It With You, and we both got parts in that play. The day of the first rehearsal, I was sitting outside the theater, waiting in the lobby for the doors to open for practice. I was sitting on the ground, listening to my brand new Walkman with earbuds in. Jill came over and she said, hi, and she said, what are you listening to? And I said, The Little Mermaid. <laughs> and she said, cool, can I have an earbud? So I gave her one of my earbuds and we sat and listened to The Little Mermaid together and we became fast friends. I still have that Walkman today. It's hanging up in my office as just a little reminder of that time period. On Tuesday, that was December 1st, we said goodbye to November of 2020. We're now into the last month of 2020. Many people are very much looking forward to 2021. All our hopes and prayers are that it will be better than 2020 was, which won't be too hard to do. That bar is not set very high. I was talking with my friend Cody on that Tuesday and he suggested watching a documentary called We Are the Champions, which of course makes you think of that Queen song, but it hasn't been in there yet. I'm not sure if it will be or not. But We Are the Champions is a documentary series. So they're, they're doing these documentaries about strange competitions. Strange, weird, unique. Anyway, competitions all around the world that have a twist to them or something historically or plain weird fun. I'm actually starting to get warm in the sun here. I watched the first one of the series it was about cheese rolling, a race down a hill that's so steep that people fall as they start to run down the hill so they tumble, sometimes get injured, but they're chasing this cheese and apparently this has been done for some say hundreds, some say thousands of years. Oh, who knows? But it's over in England. I can't remember the name of the town. It's really a, a neat little twist. You'd think that that would be silly and that you couldn't do a whole episode on that, but they they pull it off and it's enjoyable. It's it's very enjoyable. I'm looking forward to watching the rest of those. We had a little bit of drama on Monday. Zach lost his wallet. He learned the hard way that you don't keep all of your identification in your wallet. He had both his social security card and his driver's license in that wallet. We searched high and low trying to find it. He looked inside of every couch in the house, pulled out all the cushions, turned the couches upside down, searched in his room, searched in the backyard where he had been, inside of his car twice. Because I was like, I don't know, I've lost my wallet underneath my seat before. It's fallen out and gone down that crack down down there where you, you you know you can't quite see it but there it is well we looked everywhere we could we even took apart the couch well that was because i had a reason i wanted to take apart the couch it's got some broken boards inside that i want to repair which i did repair so we took apart the couch looked inside we found a bunch of stuff as you would find inside of a couch but not his wallet unfortunately his wallet was not there and we had the couch torn apart so that stayed torn apart until yesterday when i finally worked on it jill got home and she just talks him through the normal stuff where the last time he you saw it when do you remember having it when what did you use it for where did you go in your car and all that zach finally had calmed down from this frantic searching throughout the day and he looked in his car again and went wait a second there's this little cubby hole place right between his radio and his and his the bottom of the console there that he had thought that'd be a great place for my phone but his phone didn't fit in there it stuck out too far he's like well then it'd be great for my wallet and that's where it was On Wednesday, for some reason, Ben came up to me and said, hey, Dad, look at this neat trick, and he pulls a dime out of his nose. First of all, I thought he was past the age of sticking things in his nose, and I said, do you realize that that could be dangerous? He's like, how? Oh, it just, it's right there. It's like, well, what if you laughed or, or coughed or something, and then you sucked it up inside your face, and it was like up inside your sinuses? It's like, oh we'd have to take you to the doctor and they'd have to get up in there with a thing and pull it out. You know, it'd be very uncomfortable for you. So maybe, maybe not stick dimes in your nose. He's like, okay. On Thursday, I got to thinking of, again some more about things that I've learned in life by making mistakes or by trial and error. Maybe that's a better way to say it. Now, some of them just were flat out mistakes. There are things in life where you just, you do your best at what you have in front of you. You start looking for where your horizons are now while you're doing that, whether you like that particular task or not. But especially if you don't like it, you just work hard at it. You look around and you see things that you might want to do. For example, when I first got into computers, I got into tech support. I did that for, I don't know, five or six years, something like that. Did not enjoy tech support, but I worked really hard. 
got little promotions here and there, and finally decided I wanted to go over into the development and QA side. So I went back to school, got some more certifications, worked on that, and finally got over into the type of stuff that I do today, which is test automation. That took some time though. It took me pushing through my discomfort and dissatisfaction with what I was working on, especially in tech support. I'll talk some more at some point about the different phases that I went through, the different times where I burned out because I had mismanaged expectations. I was expecting too much out of myself. I was expecting me to be Superman. I'm not going to talk about that today, but I will come back to that at some point and explain how that learning process has gone. And the learning process never stops your whole life. You just keep learning and keep facing the uncomfortable times, the times when things are not only difficult, but not what you want to be doing. You give your best, even in those times, while you're looking for what you do want to be doing. Friday, I, I worked and on my lunch break, I worked on the couch, needed to get that put back together and fixed. It was very sad to me that the couch is so poorly made. Furniture seems to be one of those things that it's hard to buy quality. I feel like what I paid for that couch was way too much for what it is really made of when I looked inside of it. But, you know, I'm gonna make the best of it, fix it up a little bit, get the boards that are cracked, braced up, keep the couch for as long as we need to. Plus, you know, Working on those types of things gives me a little bit of opportunity to make some video about it. Maybe I'll put that sort of thing on TikTok or something as adventures in adulting. And that brings us up to today, Saturday, December 5th. 2020. This morning I was thinking about the fact that winter time is my most difficult time for energy. I find myself sometimes moping a little bit that, you know, I start work in the morning in the dark and by the time I'm done working it's dark. So I could mope about that, but there's got to be ways to stay energized, grateful in the middle of the seasons, both literally and figuratively, where they're not as much fun as other seasons. It, it reminds Reminds me of a quote, I think it was Denholm Elliott in the movie A Room with a View. He was saying he didn't need a room with a view because, I hope I get this right, because his, the sunshine is in his heart. The view is in his heart and I, that has stuck with me. I haven't watched that in, oh gosh, almost 30 years. That has stuck with me though because that's a skill that needs to be cultivated to have a joy, have sunshine, have a view in our hearts when the view around us is not matching that. That type of thinking about the world helps us to navigate. It helps us to encourage others and stay encouraged in our own hearts. And there's a there's an aspect of you get what you give. What you plant is what you're going to harvest. That's true with so many things, if not everything. Not that you get a direct proportionate. I mean, even with the analogy of, of planting, there's certain amounts of the harvest that doesn't come in because weather or animals or something eats it away, damages it. But with the world and people, if you want kindness coming to you, you need to give kindness whether people deserve it or not. And, for, and, and quite frequently, they will not deserve it. But some people's hearts will be touched and they will reciprocate and you'll find your tribe in the people that want to be a part of the things that you want to be a part of. That wraps up week 49 of 2020. Have a great week. We'll see you next week. Yeah, 2021 I think would be a good, not that there's ever a bad time to get in shape, but it'd be a, you know, as good a time as any.